Well, hello everyone. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Fiona Fisher. I'm the director of Scotland's National Centre for Languages um, here at the um, School of Education in the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow. We are a centre that um, is actually funded directly by Scottish Government um, because they see modern languages as a really important area of the curriculum that needs uh, specific and special support. And that's really what we do. We support teachers to implement successfully Scottish Government language policy. I'm going to talk a little today about the most recent policy in, in Scotland that affects the le learning and teaching of languages, and that is language learning in Scotland, a one plus two approach, which really follows the European model agreed at um, in Barcelona in 2002 that all young people will learn two modern languages other than their mother tongue throughout their school experience. So in Scotland, what does that look like? Well, the first recommendation of the working group was that schools offer children access to an additional language from the, the minute they start uh, primary school. In Scotland, that's round about the age four or five, what we call primary one. So from primary one, right on the way through their school experience until the end of S3, which is about age 15, in secondary school, they will be learning a language other than English. This language can be any language, provided that there is a national qualification available in that language, should the young people wish to continue learning once they leave the, the um, first stage of education in Scotland, which is called the broad general education, and when they become more specialised in the senior phase after the age of 15. So that recommendation is that that language is decided by the primary and the secondary schools working together so that there can be a seamless transition from primary into the secondary school, building on the skills that the children have developed while they've been in primary. That language we refer to as the L2, mother tongue is L1, and this second additional, or first additional language is L2. But it's a very ambitious policy, uh, particularly in an Anglophone country. So the recommendation for it is that a second additional language be introduced round about the age of nine, which is primary five, no later than primary five, so that ch all children in Scottish primary schools will be learning two languages other than their mother tongue. Um, this is hugely ambitious. Of course, it has implications for teacher education. How do we ensure that our teachers have the skills? Our primary teachers are generalists in Scotland. So how do we ensure that they have the skills to be able to deliver this curriculum? And uh, that's partly where SILT's work comes in because we support teachers not with the language skills, but with the associated pedagogies and methodologies that go along with it. And we work very closely. All our state schools are still under local authority control. That is, Scottish government devolves um, governance of education into the 32 local authorities that there are in Scotland. So we work very closely with these local authorities who act as education authorities as well um, in supporting their staff. Government has been very generous in its funding of this policy and in fact we've been particularly lucky because not only has it been funded but we've been given time to get it in place and uh, in fact the policy was the the report was first written in 2011 and the deadline for having it all in place is 2020. So uh, local authorities have been given funding and time and support in order to make this happen. Now recommendation nine also re is that in the report also recommends that language learning is an entitlement for all young people. Now that means that it's a languages for all policy, that the responsibility is for is on the teacher to break down the barriers to learning, to make sure that language learning is accessible to everyone, regardless of their ability, regardless of their own mother tongue, which may well not be English. Scotland's a very multicultural, very multilingual um, society. So we have to take all these things into consideration when we're planning. But that all children and young people should be studying their languages 
until the, uh, the end of S3, that is age 15, and there shouldn't be an opportunity to drop it before then. Beyond that, then uh, young people are allowed to choose and select the subjects that they want to, to continue with in school. And we're very hopeful that this very um, firm basis and very uh, established platform of learning that they will have experienced throughout their, their, their lives in school will encourage many of them to, to continue with the language beyond the time from when it is, when it is a, a, a compulsory part of the curriculum. So recommendation 16 says that all young people should be offered opportunities to, to follow the national qualifications in more than one language um, once they, they go into the senior phase of the secondary school. Now we have a full range of language qualifications in Scotland which start from awards and build right up to advanced higher qualifications which are um, really take ch young people to about B1 or even uh, B2 rather or even C1 of the common European framework so to a, a really high level of competence in the la independent competence in the language. Um, so we have a full suite of qualifications in a range of languages. I also should point out that Scotland has two indigenous languages, that is Gaelic and Scots, and that these two are considered part of the full suite of languages. So we tend not to use the term foreign languages for reasons of inclusion. First of all, we have our own indigenous languages, which are not foreign, but also we have to be mindful that lots of, of new Scots will, will be Scots but also have other languages other than English. So we don't like to, to use that term foreign really for, for reasons of inclusion. And perhaps I can, I can leave you with one example of some really good practice that, that is going on uh, in Scotland and it might give you some food for thought. And certainly if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a, a link to our website where you'll be able to read a case study on this particular school and, and their approach. Um, I should mention that in Scotland schools work on a, a cluster or approach or sometimes that's also referred to as an associated school group and that means that uh, each secondary school, children, our, all our schools are comprehensive, there is no entry examination for any of our schools. So children go to the school that is nearest to their home and the secondary school that they go to is the one that is associated with the primary school that they have attended. So there is no exam qualification or anything like that in order to get into a secondary school. In fact, we our curriculum is really marked by its lack of standardised testing right up until the age of 16 when uh, young people take their first raft of national qualifications. Really, there is not um, standardised testing as such, at least just now, before then. So this school, uh, it, this cluster rather, because um, it is very much a clustered approach, the recommendations of the report are that primary and secondary teachers work very closely together to achieve this. Now that's for lots of reasons. First of all, in order to get the proper transition of the L2 language, that is a language that must be started in primary one, age five, and continue to the end of S3, that, in order to get that transition, it's really important that primary and secondary schools work together. The tight secondary teachers need to know what the, the children in primary have been learning so that they can build on that prior learning once they get to secondary school and not just start again with the basics and, and, and ignore the learning that has taken part place for the first seven years of that child's life. There can be nothing more, motiva more demotivating than not having your achievements recognised. And, and we hear this time and time again for young people that if they are made to redo things they already know, then that language learning process becomes very, very demotivating. So this is really crucial that this proper um, information is passed between primary and secondary staff. But in this cluster, the Douglas Academy cluster, what th that primary secondary liaison is um, very marked and, and very, very successful. So the secondary teachers who, have, who are all graduates and specialists in languages have been using uh, their time to work with their primary colleagues 
giving them the language skills that they need. And the primary colleagues have been working with the secondary colleagues to show them the kind of pedagogies and methodologies that they would use regularly in the primary classroom. We have a big emphasis in Scottish education on active and collaborative learning and a very skills-based approach. So it's not just about, we don't see teaching as just being about divulging knowledge. Teaching it to us is more about enabling the child to learn independently. And that extends to language learning as well. So it's really important that teachers meet from both sectors to discuss how their approaches to make sure that that pr approach is joined up. And that's been a very strong um, aspect of, of this cluster's work. They've decided on French uh, as their L2, their main language, because that was the one that was already being taught in the schools and they had the resource to be able to, to do that. The local authority has paid for training for the primary teachers to upskill their, their, their language skills in French. But that left the L3, the, the, they didn't have the same access to training to put the L3 in place. So the secondary teachers decided that they had discussions between primary and secondary, they decided on Spanish as, as the L3 in this particular case. But the secondary teachers decided that they were going to run some twilight courses after school to upskill their primary colleagues and to share ideas and methodologies and teaching approaches. And this has been hugely successful because one of the biggest difficulties or challenges of this policy is how to create that teacher confidence, in the, particularly in the primary teachers who are not specialists in language and may not have an awful lot of the language, particular language that they're teaching. What has been really exciting has been that the teachers have been willing to learn a language alongside their pupils. They're admitting that they don't know it, they're admitting that they make mistakes, but they're looking up things and finding out things along with their pupils and that's providing a very powerful experience for both the teacher and, and the young person as well. In the secondary school, as I said, they have Span uh, French as the L2, running right the way through to the end of S3. But the difficulty and the challenge in the secondary school is often to find time in the curriculum to put in that L3. Where do they find time in, in a curriculum which is very broad in Scotland to add that additional language without, and this is crucial, without taking time away from the L2? Because if you take time away from the L2, that can then put children at a disadvantage when it comes to, to choosing a qualification, to, to, to study a qualification further in the senior phase. So this school has a series of electives in the first two years of, of secondary school, subjects that the, the pupils can elect to take out of in, where their interests lie. And these electives run for a 10 week block um, every term. So included in the electives are Spanish and Mandarin is the other language that they're offering. And the pupils can choose which one they wish to do and there are um, intentions in the school to add uh, Russian to those electives as well. So the young people have their entitlement to their L2 and they also get their L3 experience through these electives that they can opt into and choose which language that they're going to teach. At the end of S2 there is a slight narrowing of the curriculum where the young people can choose some subjects that they want to do. They have to continue with their French, that's not an option to drop it, but they can also choose to pick up a full course in another language, which is Spanish at this point. So you could have children in uh, S going from S2 into S3 who are studying a full course in two languages. And the school has been very careful to create lots of pathways into the senior phase for children of all abilities. And that's a particular strength of this school. They have a really inclus inclusive ethos. This is not just about teaching the elite. This is about making sure that everyone has the language skills that they will need in order to effectively contribute to a multilingual world. So they have pathways for at all different sorts of levels in French, Spanish, Italian, Mandarin and Russian. Now that is really quite unusual in Scottish schools to be able to offer five different languages uh, in the senior phase. And again, it's a particular strength of this school and this cluster. 
I've only given you a flavour about what's going on uh, in, in, in this particular cluster, but I really would urge you to have a look at the case study because there you will be able to see videos as well and hear the pupil voice, hear the pupils talking about their language learning experience, hear the, t the teachers both from the primary and the secondary schools talking about their experience of learning a language and teaching a language. And I think you would find it pretty interesting. And finally, you know, we give a lot of support we, to the Scottish teachers. Um, what we try to do is set up a community of practice or communities of practice because really recent research done by the OECD shows that the management of change is so much more effective when teachers work together. Um, and if we can get people working together, collaborating, sharing ideas, then they don't feel so isolated and that change is likely to be much more effective. We all know as linguists that learning a language is not an easy thing. It's not an easy ask to ask primary teachers, some of whom may be well coming towards the end of their careers, suddenly to upskill themselves in a language that they've never learned or never used before. And we're not underestimating the, the challenges that lie ahead of us. But recent research shows that parents, school leaders, teachers and pupils have really been enthused by this new reinvigoration of language learning in Scotland and that's hugely encouraging because ultimately what we are trying to achieve through our curriculum in Scotland is to affect positive societal change. We are looking to make sure that our young people have the, the skills and abilities to compete with counterparts from all over the world in an increasingly globalised job market. But apart from that, we are trying to make sure that Scotland is an open and outward looking society that is tolerant and understanding of people who come, come here seeking to start a new life and that we really want to make sure that by having language skills, our society understands people of different cultures and develops that intercultural sensitivity that is just so crucial. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed my presentation.